As far as I'm concerned, he's reading half a jerk. He's reading half a jerk and a full plate of mama's boy. When Tijuana and Tyron started dating at age 15, they had no idea their life together would be an amusement park ride filled with the highs of three children and the lows of divorce. Now, apart for several years, this couple has reunited and is thinking of tying the knot once again. But should they? I was three months pregnant. He's like, well, I have to go pick up something for my mom. He leaves. 12 o'clock midnight comes. Don't hear from him. I'm calling his phone. I'm blowing his phone up. 7 o'clock in the morning comes. Still didn't show up. 9 o'clock in the morning, he finally comes to the door. All right, but by then, I already had his stuff packed. It got nasty. Like when you pushed me down the stairs? What? It, it was an aggressive push. It wasn't no get off me. She, she's a little lady, but she's very strong. Will Tijuana and Tyron buckle themselves in for a second ride, or should they exit the tunnel of love for good? Today, on Divorce Court for For Your Vows. Come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Tijuana Fouché and Tyron Rivers. The two of you, interestingly enough, were married. Yes. Then you got divorced. Yes. And now you're back here considering getting married again. But since it didn't work the first time, you thought you'd get a little advice about marrying the second time, which is why you're here to see me. Correct. But before we get to any of that, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Fouché. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your history and how we've gotten here? OK. Um, once I made 18 years old, I got pregnant with our first son. Um, I delivered at 19. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, I mean, everything was fine. I mean, we were young kids just being in love, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, things just didn't feel right to me, like with his family, like compared to my family. My family welcomes anybody, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to give them a reason to not like you. But with his mom, I remember um, when I very first started going by his house, just sitting down, sitting around or whatever, and she could be in the kitchen cooking something, and um, she never approached me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Tijuana, do, would you like something to eat, make yourself comfortable, things like that. It would be, Tyron, she want to eat? You know, and I kind of felt like, why? You know, I'm sitting right here. She can talk to me, you know. Now, is this before you were married or after you were this married? This is before we were married. Before you were married. Just mar dating. Yeah. How did she treat you after you were married? Was she welcoming? For my wedding, I didn't even get a, a wave. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a hello, congratulations, nothing. Not a gift, nothing. Not a hug. Nothing. Just walk right past me. Mr. Rivers, does your yeah. mom not like her? On the wedding day, at the reception is where she's talking to my mother, uh -huh. didn't, didn't acknowledge her. If I was to ask my mother that today, she would say she did. Who to believe? I don't know. It's just weird to me that you don't know what the relationship is between your wife and your mother, that you can't see what's going on, that you just couldn't tell that there was a problem. The problem, more so, in my opinion, comes from her than my family. And, and what do you think her problem is? Why do you think she has a problem with your family? Because they're not like hers. In what respect? No. Because, in my opinion, her family is very party, party. They are willing to accept most people. Mm -hmm. Mine is not. Like, her family can't have a party without music. They, they're, they're that type of, of family. They're a fun, demonstrative, yes. Mine is engaging not. family. Right. My, my family, they can sit and have a party and everybody reading a book. Like, they're very, they're very... So they're not order. demonstrative. They're, they're conservative. Yes. They don't, they don't yes. express themselves right. but openly. The, and the thing is, when she's around my family, she acts like a part of my family. Like, she doesn't talk. She doesn't say a word. You want to eat? No, I don't want to eat. Then as soon as we get in the car, she said, Tyron, I'm hungry. No. <laughs> His family is the type, you have to like, you know, kind of kiss their butt type sort of. I feel like as a guest in someone's home, it's your job to make them feel comfortable. I'm very reserved. I'm not going to go somewhere and kick my feet up on someone's couch and, you know, I'm, you have to make me feel comfortable. You know, and like I said, I'm approached like it's always Tyron. She want this or she want that. I never, I never get approached. Is then, that how they do? Uh, sometimes. Does it concern you that it concerns your wife? Yes. Would you think that since your wife is your wife and something your family is doing is, is, is bothering her, 
wouldn't you discuss that with your family? Like say, you know, my wife's a little uncomfortable with this, this, and this. Can we talk about it? Now, recently, like, I, this is what I've told my, my, my mother and my sister, because that's normally who she worries about, because that's not who I'm closest with. When you come to see the kids, or if you come to the house, speak to Tijuana. That's all I ask. That's all I can ask. I can't make them do anything out of the ordinary. I can't make them give a parade when Tijuana walk in the door. So I kind of tell them, just can you just speak to Tijuana? So according to Tijuana, they, don't sp they only speak when I'm around. Yes. Mm -hmm. When Which means that's all I can go on. What, right, what I right. see, what I see is them speaking to do, her. Does your family just don't speak to people come in the house? They just generally don't speak to people? No. I mean, is that how, how they roll? No. They have who they like. Yeah, you and my husband and your family were acting like that, you'd be hearing a whole lot from me. When Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues, will Tyron admit to being unfaithful? I understand that at some juncture during the marriage, Mr. Rivers, you got a girlfriend while she was three months pregnant. What happened? Are you considering getting married but aren't quite sure your intended is the right one for you? I'll give you my opinion. Call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court Before Your Vows is back with the case of Tiawanda Fouché, who is considering remarrying her ex-husband, even though she says his family doesn't like him. But is it in her best interest to remarry him? She says that while you were separated, that you cut off the credit card that she was using for the children. Is that true? I understand that at some juncture during the marriage, Mr. Rivers, you got a girlfriend while she was three months pregnant. Is no. that accurate? No, that's not. What happened? We were separated. She kicked me out of the house. During that time, I met another woman. Mm -hmm. But it was not while we were actively, I'm um, living at home, it was not that. Right. Uh, what happened there, Ms. Fouché? Okay. I was three months pregnant. Um, he came home from work around four o'clock in the afternoon. He's like, well, when he came home, yeah, he's like, well, I have to go pick up something from my mom. He leave. That's four o'clock in the afternoon, mind you. Twelve o'clock midnight comes. Don't hear from him. I'm calling his phone. I'm blowing his phone up. He's not answering. I'm sending him text messages. He's not responding. So seven o'clock in the morning come, still didn't show up. Nine o'clock in the morning, he finally come to the door. Our, but by then I'd already had his stuff packed, you know, because I'm like, I'm three months pregnant. Like, what are you doing? Okay. You know? Mr. Rivers, what's your version of that event? Yes. The, everything she's talking about happened, but it was after she had already kicked me out of the house. That is mm. not true. The woman who she's speaking of, I met like three months after she had kicked me out. That's not true. Okay. okay. She says that while you were separated, that you cut off the credit card that she was using for the children. Is that true? Oh, no, no, she wasn't using it for the children. For the well, light, it was for the light bill. Well, did, you, did you take a look at the bill and con were concerned about yeah, the purchases the, she was the making? The light bill, um, as well as uh, get, she was putting gas in her car. She was getting clothes because they have a clothing store mm -hmm. that she liked to go to that, I, that, that she frequent. At that time, he had the car. Mm -hmm. No, the card. The card. The card. And, yeah, mall, mall purchases that wow. I know for a fact I didn't make. And I actually forgot I gave her that. Mm -hmm. And it became an issue once she kept the kids away from me. And I said, okay, well, since I can't even see my children, then I'm going to cut off the card. Yeah. Can't see them. They don't need to eat. What? Uh, Ms. Fouché, were you, were, you hiding the, were you keeping the children from him? This is where it started. This is why. He's lying, okay? I paid for a light bill. That was it. Because I was pregnant by the time he took the car. I had no way of getting around. I couldn't do anything. He you know, I have doctor's appointments, things like that. He had the car or whatever. So I ended up taking matters into my own hands. I said, well, if you're not going to give it to me, I'm going to get it one way or the other. I put him on child support. And that's typical to your I put it on. I put him on child support. Well, do, do you think she had a right to be concerned that she was pregnant and that she had your kids? No. And that, no, no. And, she can, and that she can she be concerned. concerned. I'm still talking. Uh, uh, concerned that she was pregnant, had your children, and she was worried about get, she didn't have a car and didn't have any money. Don't you think she would have a right to have some kind of uh, expectation that you would assist her? That's absolutely fine. She could have called me and asked me for anything. Mm -hmm. L like she just said, she didn't like it because she wasn't getting it the way she wanted it, which is part of her controlling. Mm -hmm. she, if she would ask me, she would call and she'd say, our son needs diapers. 
So what I would do is I would go to the store, come back, drop off the diapers. That's not good enough for Tia Wanda. She wants the money. Judge, when can, can, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Why in the world are you people considering getting remarried? When divorce court before your vows continues, what will Tia Wanda say to Tyron's allegations? When you push me down the stairs, what? That kind of could cause the family to get mad. It, it was an aggressive push. It wasn't no get off me. Do you think Tia Wanda and Tyron should get married again? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Tyron Rivers, who is debating remarrying his ex-wife, even though he says she is money hungry. But are they ready to say I do again? What has changed since all this nonsense has occurred that makes you believe that you ought to enter into this marriage yet again? Right now, as far as I'm concerned, he's reading half a jerk. He's reading half a jerk and a full plate of mama's boy. And I don't know why you would consider having someone who's that controlling and, 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 and that seemingly uh, oblivious to your needs back in your home. Explain that to me. Well, I mean, the main thing was his family. Like, back then, we were going through a lot of things. Like, like he said, you know, we were broken up, so it got nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, everything, like you it got really nasty. What? Like when you had pushed me down the stairs that time, that kind of could cause the family to get mad. What stairs are you talking about? But the trailer? Amnesia. I believe him. Amnesia. No, I believe him because you're not outraged Amnesia. by no, the listen, accusation. Is, I believe him. This is what he's talking about. Okay, everyone knows when you're in relationships and the woman is upset, it happens. I, I mean, it happens. The woman's upset and, the, you know, your man is like trying to play with you kind of like, come on, baby, don't do that type thing. And I was, you know, I just like, it wasn't no push how he's saying I would never do that. It was like, no, move like that. And he stumbled mm -hmm. at this and time, fell out. right. No, he didn't fall down. He stumbled off of like two steps, like kind of like that. Yeah, well, I didn't fall down, but it, it, it was aggressive push. It wasn't no, no get off me. She, she's a little lady, but she's very strong. She no. pushed me she very well, hard. But nobody should put their hands on anybody. <laughs> what has changed since all this nonsense has occurred that makes you believe that you ought to enter into this marriage yet again? She's changed. She's not as stubborn as she used to be. Um, like, I remember back then, like, when we first met, I couldn't have friends. I couldn't go out, nothing. Even, and I'm not really the go-out type, but two or three times if I want to go play basketball with a friend, it would, it would be an issue. Now, Ms. Mr. Rivers, I just asked you why you would want to marry her again, and... 20 seconds in, you're complaining about her. No. I need to hear something no, no, no. that would make me believe you believe that this marriage now has a chance. The progression. She has progressed. The time we were apart, which is about maybe two and a half, three years, and us reuniting, she ha she's not the same person. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in the future, she keep progressing to, to where we can say I do again. So I, she has progressed better. Say something nice about her. <laughs> She's beautiful. Say something nice about who she is. She's Karen. And Judge, I ask him that all the time. I never could get an answer. Yes. I, would get, I would get you a good mother to our kids. And I'm like, well, that's not saying nothing about me. Why do you want to be with me? I need to know. I actually genuinely believe we were put on this earth for each other. I actually think we were meant for each other. I really do. You know, that, that, that's a, that sounds good. Doesn't mean much, though. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't believe in soulmates and all that, and that's just a personal thing. Maybe it's from working here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you're made for each other, th that thought seems to indicate that it'll be okay no matter what. And it's not okay no matter what because it's not working out. When Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues, will Tyron take Judge Lynn's advice in order to get his wife back? Once you're grown, you say, Mom, love me and respect me enough 
to give her A, B, and C. That's what a man does. That's not disrespectful. Do you think Tijuana and Tyron should get married again? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Tijuana Fouché and Tyron Rivers, who married and divorced and are now contemplating remarriage. She's got a very, very difficult issue with your mom. She just does, and you don't seem to see it or honor it at all. I mean, even if she's completely wrong, she, your mother makes her feel terrible, and you don't seem to care. And you have to, when you get married, she comes first, mm -hmm. and mama comes second. Yes. And if mama is upsetting her, you need to deal with that but you seem to feel that she's simply incorrect, she shouldn't feel badly about it, and get over it, I'm not gonna deal with it. That's how, am I, did I get that right? You hit it on the spot. It's my mother. So all I can do to her, I can go to her, I can ask her, did this happen? Uh, and she's gonna say no. Once she say no, what do I do now? Do I tell her she's lying? You man up. You see what I'm saying? You man up. Mr. Rivers, here's, wh here, here's where it is. You can't, you can't get married and uh -huh. still be a boy. And so when you say, it's my mother, what can I do? Then you're still being a boy. Mm -hmm. Because my boys at home, it's their mother, what can you do? You can't say nothing to me, because I, you know, I put a roof over your head. But once you're grown, you say, Mom, my wife is upset about A, B, and C. I've seen you guys together, and I don't think you're trying hard enough. And I think you should respect, love me, and respect me enough to give her a, B, and C. That's what a man does. That's not disrespectful. <laughs> it's just man's work. Let me ask you this question. Because uh, if you didn't have children together, I would tell you we to run. I, I mean, I, I would. I would tell you to run because he ain't ready. But my question is, how are you two around the children how is the co-parenting situation going? That's fine. That's there's no every, issues there. Those everybody's no, cool. Those three. That is. You're not chaotic not, and arguing not, in front of them. Not at all. The, it's no. I was gonna say the only time it gets the only time we really get at each other is when his family have a function coming up or a birthday coming up. Glad you brought that up. Things like that. You know that's when we argue. Then, we, like I said, us together. It's never really a main problem. My problem is with him not stepping up. Mm -hmm. That's we, my main we problem. We would have a function. We actually just had one. We go to the function. Now, mind you, by the way, she sits in a car the whole time. If we going, she sits in the car. He leaves me in the if car. If it's three hours. Well, why don't you get out? Because I'm like a ghost. No one, I don't feel comfortable. So I come. I ask you before you even go, Tijuana, do you want to come? You know, you know what my problem is with that part? Sometimes I feel like, okay, well, he's my man, I should support him, I should yeah, be there the if everybody's there with, the, with you know, couples and things like that. And Ms. then on Fusha, the other you hand- you gotta get out of the car. That's a, that's a 12 year old's <laughs> response to a problem. You go in there, you that. stay with your man and let your man see what's, not, what's going on. And then as a man, you tell your family to say, look, this is my woman. To respect me, you have to respect her. You have to love her and be welcoming to her. You can, don't, don't, don't wonder, don't close your eyes, don't look askance. You gotta, you gotta, you, you, you gotta require it. It's been you 12 gotta years. Require, you said, and if you can't welcome her, you can't welcome me. Again. Because she comes first. Yes. She comes first. Until you can do that, I wouldn't be bothered with him, other than with the children. Always love your children. Always be careful. Don't be afraid to give her cash. Sometimes, you know, when you nickel and dime in her like that, that's just hard to live. You know, make sure that your family takes, feels well taken care of. If you want her back, be generous and kind. Don't be so hard-headed and rigid and, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Court her. Don't go back until he gets ready. <laughs> this matter is adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Tijuana writes, things are good but not great between Tyron and me. We still are together and are trying to make things work because we love each other. As far as Tyron's family goes, we're not on good terms with him yet, but we hope to fix that in time. <laughs>